Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Adventures in Small Business, a collaboration of the Small Business Administration, Hawaii District Office, and its resource partners, where we showcase the stories of local entrepreneurs and their businesses. Hi, my name is Dennis Kwok, and uh, before we invite our guest, uh, I'd like to talk about National Veterans Small Business Week, which is from November 5th to November 9th. Um, it is really a great week where we celebrate and we do great events for uh, veterans and um, veteran small businesses. Um, one of the first events we're actually going to do is uh, the Money Moxie class, which will be held on November 9th uh, in the morning. And it will be held at 500 Alamona at the uh, SBA uh, Hawaii District Office. Um, it'll be for like an hour, an hour and a half, and we'll invite bankers. The uh, Downtown Uncorked event, which is a salute to our veterans, it's going to be held also on November 9th, and it will be held uh, at 6 o'clock at the YWCA. And you can purchase your tickets uh, by visiting their website at www.mingcenterforbusinessandleadership.org. And um, we're going to be actually celebrating uh, the veteran-owned small businesses and their achievements. And one of the award winners uh, for the 2018 new veteran-owned small business is our guest today, uh, Ms. Kenyatta McCoy. Kenyatta, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and Kenyatta is the uh, proprietor of My Personal CPA and Financial Planner, LLC. Yeah, and uh, Kenyatta is also, uh, she does a lot of great work uh, in the community. She does uh, mentoring for veteran-owned small business and other businesses alike. Um, so Kenyatta, maybe you can talk a little bit about your personal history and then we'll talk a little bit more about um, so, some tips for small business owners, for small business bookkeeping and accounting. Absolutely. Yeah. So my history, yeah. I've uh, spent time in the military. Yeah. I'm currently still involved and in, heavily involved in the military as my husband is still active duty and such. And my military service has truly impacted, you know, everything I did thereafter. Spent some time in the corporate sector and now I am an entrepreneur where I own my own CPA firm. Okay. Um, did you do bookkeeping or accounting services in the military? I did. I okay. was a finance officer in the military. Okay. So I was assisting other uh, service members and such with pay. Uh, I did some unique type of activities and such in the, the military as well, but all surrounding finances. Okay. And did that translate well into you taking on, uh, you know, your own business and uh, the services? Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, my, my time in the military really that sense of duty mm -hmm. to, you know, a bigger purpose than yourself, that really becomes engraved and ingrained in your, your personality and what you are and so forth. Right. That leads to selfless service as well as, you know, personal courage. So yeah. that sense of duty carried on throughout, you know, once I left the military, and now it's an involvement in our community with other small business owners and like. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I like to just say that, you know, Kenyatta has really, really been a very true member of the small business community. She does a lot of outreach. She does a lot of pro bono work, working with small businesses. And we really do appreciate you. Thank you. And as a mentor in one of our programs, as well as a community resource partner for Thank the you. SBA and the Veteran Small Business um, Outreach Center. Thank you. Um, so uh, let's talk about how you came and to start your own business. I mean, okay. did you, when you were separating from the Army, did you <laughs> just say, hey, you know what? I'm going to start my own CPA firm. I mean, how, oh. how was that process? Absolutely not. Okay. Yeah, it's never <laughs> like I, that. <laughs> when I separated from the military, I went corporate. Okay. Spent a lot of time working for Fortune 100 companies and such, and really was uh, sitting close with CFOs and, and alike, doing worldwide accounting for different statues in different countries and so forth. When I came here to Hawaii, I when started. Was that? I'm sorry. In uh, 2015. 2015, okay. I started to just volunteer. Mm -hmm. There were so many people in our community saying that they needed assistance. And I started to volunteer, and I started volunteering at the small business center. So I would do my corporate job mm -hmm. from 4 a.m. to noon, oh, and then I would volunteer for the rest of the day, just helping small business owners and taxpayers alike. And from volunteering, mm -hmm. that's when that sense of duty to the community and you know just that desire to serve really started to motivate me to then look beyond myself and uh, start my business, start oh, my wonderful. own CPA firm. 
And your own CPA, and your CPA firms, uh, could you talk a little bit about the services that my personal CPAs and financial services does? Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, at my personal CPA, what really differentiates us from any other CPA firm is that I take that corporate experience and I then help small, small business owners to incorporate it mm -hmm. in their day-to-day -day strategic planning, cash flow management, and other activities to drive forward with what their vision is for their company. Mm -hmm. And so because we get up close and personal, with our accountants, it helped them to, you know, see how their operations and what they do so well mm -hmm. align with the data and what can the data then tell them as far as to improve their overall profitability. Oh, okay, I see. And, you know, um, with, uh, talking about small businesses, um, obviously you do your own uh, CPA work for your own company. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but, you know, uh, a lot of small business owners, uh, they have, when it comes to finances and doing bookkeeping and filing taxes, it's a, always a different language. And absolutely. everybody's level of understanding of, uh, you know, laws as well as, you know, local laws as well as federal laws uh, differ. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, um, you know, Key things every small business owner should know about bookkeeping as well as accounting. And Absolutely. So the key things is to recognize and understand that accounting is the lifeblood of the company. Mm -hmm. Cash flow is absolutely critical, and as as well as planning. Mm -hmm. And if you lack to do any of those things, then mm -hmm. you know easily whether you're booming or whether you're in a you know ramping uh, phase, then you can ultimately cause you know catastrophic impacts. To your business if you're not properly planning and implementing you know controls and procedures for accounting and bookkeeping and remaining compliant in all things okay and talking about planning i mean if you had to give a time frame of how to plan for mm -hmm. a for the i mean do you plan a few months ahead or do you plan a year ahead what is i mean what is a you know i guess the timeline here planning should be done throughout the year throughout the year okay. absolutely it is imperative that you know in for our clients we sit down multiple times throughout the year at, throughout the year to see are we on track to the goals that we set at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. what actions do we need to take in order for us to shift and make sure that we achieve those goals as well as tax planning is very imperative so that we're not overpaying taxes and we're in the best tax position that we can be by the end of the year so right now starting in november we kick off our tax season planning and for our clients, we're doing forecasting right now to say, right now, if we were to file your taxes, what would your position be? And we have 60 days to take any other actions to put us in the best position to maximize our overall tax position and lower our tax liability. Oh, wow. Okay. So tax season, actually, actually I guess it starts today, huh? Absolutely. November 1st. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, biggest mistakes you would say that small business owners make? I mean, I've, you've seen, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Um, it, and, and I've experienced this myself. Okay. It's a do-it-yourself attitude right. where we see, you know, different tasks or activities being done and we want to take on the mentality that we can do it ourselves. Okay. We know that we specialize in what the specialty of the business is as a business owner or what have you, but because you're a business owner, you're required to wear so many other hats mm -hmm. in the business. And then you start to try to venture out and do things yourself. Mm -hmm. Accounting is one of those areas that you don't want to run that risk because the penalties, the fines, and the impact, the financial impacts that can happen if it's done incorrectly mm -hmm. can be, again, catastrophic to the business. Right. But just learning that, you know, you have to get to a point where you recognize when to bring on a professional to be a part of your team, and then you have that CEO, CFO type of, of collaboration that goes forward with your business. Mm. And uh, would you recommend that to any small business size? I mean, we're talking about small businesses that has just one person, would you still recommend Absolutely. that they actually work with the CPA firm? And, Absolutely. Or, okay. Absolutely. There, as, as you mentioned before, mm -hmm. we do pro bono services. Right. So even when you don't have the budget, you mm -hmm. don't have, it's still imperative and it's so important for us to serve the community. That's why we continue to offer the free services so that, you know, any small business can afford mm -hmm. with just your time right. to come in and get that, uh, that guidance and assistance. Okay. So biggest mistakes is not looking for help or not asking advisement from the experts. Absolutely. Um, what, what do you see when you talk to small business owners, the biggest challenges for them um, in terms of, I guess, uh, you know, financial planning or whether it's accounting services? I mean, what, what do you see as the biggest, uh, you know, challenge for small business owners in this climate? Absolutely. I think the biggest challenge, especially here in Hawaii. in Hawaii, is the fact that you have to manage cash flow in a way that, you know, you may have a little bit more flexibility on the mainland as such. 
but here with some of the tax requirements and so forth, mm -hmm. regardless of whether you're, you know, yielding a profit or not, you're, you still have tax liabil liabilities mm -hmm. that you have to take care of. So here, cash flow management is absolutely key mm -hmm. because ultimately you still have compliance uh, requirements that you have to adhere to, and without doing so, it can definitely be, you know, a challenge thereafter. Right. So to mitigate some of the risks for cash flow challenges for small business owners, mm -hmm. um, what can they do? Plan. Plan. Okay. So <laughs> going plan. back to what we were talking about, planning Absolutely. is essential. Absolutely. Okay. You plan and you put timelines around when you have cash outflow happening right. as well as your cash inflow and you, you stretch that out to a point where you know that you can hit critical times and make sure that you can plan that cash flow accordingly. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, if you were working with a client, do you recommend a certain kind of tool or software that you work with that you're comfortable with? Or can they just come in with a notebook and their P&Ls? And I mean, you must have seen, uh, you know, the gamut, right? Absolutely. Yeah. There, there's always an array of yeah. different accounting resources and tools and such. What I encourage small business owners to do mm -hmm. is recognize that you're not, you don't want to incorporate something and spend the resources on a system or a tool now for something that's not gonna, you know, assist you in the future. Okay. So look for, you know, resources and tools and systems that's, you know, gonna help you grow in the future and ultimately you're gonna be able to manage mm -hmm. that future growth. But if you get something that's just catered to your ramping phase mm -hmm. or your beginning time period, sure. then once you start to ramp up and grow, then you have to look at replacing it or things of that nature. So always look ahead, look mm -hmm. futuristic and plan to incorporate something that can grow with you. Mm. Um, we, we, you actually, the last time I saw you, we were doing a class called the 2018 Tax Reform Class. Yes. And uh, you know, you were a great speaker. We had some, uh, you, we had you and some uh, attorneys, tax attorneys there. And uh, can you kind of, uh, you know, talk a little bit more the impact that the tax reform is going to have, not only personally, uh, but as uh, uh, to small businesses as well. Absolutely. So this 2018 incorporated tax um, reform is the biggest in history. Mm. So it's the biggest I've been in this field for going on 20 years now. Right. This is the biggest that we've ever seen. This is the one that's going to impact everybody regardless of who you are. Mm -hmm. So if you are a taxpayer in the United States, you will be impacted wow. in one way or another. For my small business owners, a critical piece of it is the uh, what's called a qualified business deduction. Mm -hmm. And so that qualified business income deduction can be up to 20% of your net profit that you can deduct on your taxes. Wow. But the key is you want to make sure that you're within the parameters to maximize on that 20%. If you fall outside of those parameters, then you're going to limit what that deduction then can uh, be incorporated in your tax return. Okay. So it's again, critical that you plan mm -hmm. so that you know ahead that, okay, am I getting close to those uh, parameters? And okay. if so, what actions do I need to make now mm -hmm. so that I can be sure to maximize that 20% deduction? That's the planning, right? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. That is the planning. That is That's the planning. a great okay. example of it. Sure. And um, could you talk a little bit more about the parameters? I mean, does it depend on the size of the company as well as how you're incorporated? Well, it depends on the type of company, whether okay. you're a service company or okay. what have you, personal service. It also depends on, um, it's really going to get down to the pass-through mm -hmm. business owners okay, pass and entities. what their taxable income mm -hmm. is. Okay. The taxable income based on their filing status is what the parameter is set on. Okay. And so you want to make sure that there is calculation and forecast done to see where your taxable income can land based on those results and then make those adjustments to be able to maximize on that 20% deduction. Right. Um, so planning is a key. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, Kenyatta, we're going to take a short break, and uh, we'll come back in a few minutes. Wonderful. Thanks. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff, but I really like energy stuff, so I'm gonna keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're gonna talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're gonna definitely be talking about it. 
We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Uh, welcome back to Adventures in Small Business with our guest, uh, Ms. Kenyatta McCoy. Uh, so Kenyatta, we were talking really about uh, the 2018 tax reform and how that affects small businesses. Um, in your opinion, I know there's a lot of moving pieces for different kinds of businesses and as well as you know, personal taxpayers. Um, is this good or is this bad? I know it's a very, very generic question to a very <laughs> complex uh, you know, I guess problem or you know, solution. Um, so overall, there are some very good elements to it because this is the first time where small businesses that are passed through entities, which is defined by a sole proprietor, an right. LLC, right. partnership, or an S corporation, these pass through entities having that 20% qualified business income deduction is significant mm -hmm. because this is the first time we've seen something like that. That can be huge in tax savings for small business owners. Mm -hmm. The other component is just as a taxpayer in general, your overall, the tax brackets have changed. Mm -hmm. And we see about a two and a half percent, two to two and a half percent savings in each bracket versus the last bracket. Wow. However, here are the, you know, there's pros and cons sure. to both. Let's, so here let's are the take cons. The medicine. <laughs> <laughs> we no longer have our personal exemptions that, you know, would have reduced our taxable income and such. However, the uh, child tax credit has doubled this, you know, coming mm -hmm. into 2018. So there's a lot of pros and cons. It all depends on the culmination of your particular tax situation. For a lot of my taxpayers here in Hawaii, some of the other concerns is now there's a limit on, you know, the when you purchase a home mm -hmm. and such, and that limit now being for the mortgage is 750000 Right. So, you know, a lot of uh, homes here yeah, tend to be well over that 750, so that poses an additional challenge for my taxpayers that itemize their deductions. Right. So for itemization, your state and local taxes are now limited mm -hmm. to only $10,000 for a married filing joint. And so absolutely, when yeah. your higher earnings have you know sure. state taxes and such, now we have limitations that combine both your real estate taxes mm -hmm. and your state income taxes to only be 10,000 tax deductible. So on our Schedule A, there are a lot of changes that's minimizing the deductions. But overall, the balance there is that, you know, standard deductions have doubled and, you know, over. So it's a bunch of ins and outs. Mm -hmm. For each of our taxpayers, what we did is we actually took their 2017 data mm -hmm. and we applied the 2018 new laws mm -hmm. and we showed them an apples to apples comparison right. on what the bottom line looks like. Right. And that helped them to be able to plan throughout this year mm -hmm. to be able to make adjustments as needed based on what their individual household, mm -hmm. how the individual household was going to be impacted. Sure. And, you know, uh, because you work with small businesses um, mm -hmm. and through pass-through entities, that must small business, uh, I guess, filings must bleed a lot into personal. Absolutely. So, I mean, do you see, do you get a lot of clients that actually, uh, you do their business taxes and their personal taxes? Is yes. That, is that a natural progression, I guess? We have to, we have to focus on both because yeah. when we're planning and mm -hmm. when we're forecasting and such, we have to see how the business is performing. Sure. And then based on the business performance, what's going to pass through to that individual taxpayer and then their overall tax position. Right. So we have to take both components to be able to recognize, you know, what's going to be the the best tax move mm -hmm. and what's going to put you in the best position to minimize your tax liability. Right. And, you know, I want to kind of talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, your work in the community because, you know, as a SBA resource partners for the VBOC, uh, one of the greatest pleasures I get is actually just, uh, you know, meeting small business owners and mm -hmm. assisting in any way I can. And, uh, you know, it's been a great, uh, it's challenging at times, but it, it's been a great service for me because I, I really do appre uh, appreciate working with these small businesses and it's very, very gratifying you know, Absolutely. Uh, helping businesses. So um, maybe you can talk a little bit more about your role in the community and what you do, uh, but also uh, maybe talk about some of the success stories that you encountered through your work with small business owners. Absolutely. So like I mentioned before, you know, we provide the free services, the pro bono services to clients so that small business owners, so that they can come in and get that guidance right. and get that assistance. So as they continue to leverage those services through the Small Business uh, Development Center, 
then we're able to start positioning them where they need to go to be able to grow their business. Right. Once they start growing and ramping up and such, then they start to see cash flow impacts and they start to see, you know, where the train is going in the right direction. Right. And at that point, they see, once they see the impacts, they're able to make those adjustments to say, okay, does my budget now afford for me to have monthly accounting services or do we need to continue to ramp up mm -hmm. and eventually get there? Right. So a great example is um, in volunteering at the Small Business uh, Development Center, there was a particular client that came in and they were starting off as a food truck. Mm -hmm. And so it was very challenging for them to, you know, great concept. The operations were superb and such, but it was very challenging in the accounting arena and so forth for them. So they started working with us and we went in intensely to help them turn it around. And in less than two years, they grew from just that food truck location mm -hmm. to now six location and franchising outside into a different country. Wow. So it's been tremendous to see how those very uh, strategies and those very tactics that are used in Fortune 500 companies mm -hmm. to bring it down to the small business level and see how just successful it makes them. Uh, it must be very gratifying to see Absolutely. your client, uh, you know, flourish that much. Absolutely. And, um, but you must also see some clients, are they, do you, uh, you know, encounter some clients where it's almost impossible for them to get out of the red? And do you sometimes encourage them not to continue on with the business? I mean, is there a threshold that you see? So with any, any venture that you go into, sure. you have to recognize whether you're going to be, you know, you have milestones or you have goals, and if you're not able to pull forward mm -hmm. and such, what is your exit plan? Right. So I always say when you go into a venture, you want to have barriers there right. to where you have an exit plan just like you had an entrance plan. Right. And the reason being is because at the end of the day, you have to maintain some sort of uh, protection for your personal you know, mm -hmm. uh, household and your own personal liabilities. And so with that being said, you absolutely need an exit plan mm -hmm. just in case things are not going according to the way that you initially envisioned. Right, okay. So um, some advisement to small business owners. How do you know you've chosen the right account? Except for you, I mean, obviously, <laughs> but, I mean, you know, if they were looking, shopping for a, a CPA, I mean, what, I mean what, do they, what kind of questions should they ask or what should absolutely. they look for? I, I suggest that you interview, do a face-to-face -face interview mm -hmm. with anyone that you want to bring in as a business partner that's going to support your vision and such. Mm -hmm. You want to know how much involvement are they willing to have and how can they help you get to the next level? Because where you're at right now, you got there on your own. Right. And so if you're trying to plan for the future and you mm -hmm. want to advance and get to the next level, you need a team that's going to be surrounded, you know, surround you to help you, you know, catapult to that next level. Right. So with interviewing them, you want to make sure that you have plenty of, um, just insight on how they're willing to get involved. Right. I say again, when you you know model your small business after Fortune 500, 100 companies and such, there are two names that are well known in corporations. You tend to know the CEO's name, sure. and you tend to know the yeah. CFO name. You know that chief financial officer name. Those are the two people, the right. two brains that really drive that that company mm -hmm. to the future. Right. And so, as the CEO of any small business. You want to make sure that your accounting team is bringing in those CFO elements mm -hmm. to help you elevate your business and not just keep you where you're at. Just doing the books, doing the data entry, doing those elements is not going to you know, take you to the next level. You need someone to help you really strategize mm -hmm. and come out with actionable items to say, this quarter, this is what we need to do to mm -hmm. accomplish that goal. Right. And then we go back and look at it and see, okay, did we accomplish it? What tweaks do we need to make? What should we be doing mm -hmm. on the ground mm -hmm. to, uh, in order to hit our goals for the data? So it must be challenging for you because this requires a lot of face-to-face -face time with clients? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot of talking and a lot of explaining to do? Absolutely. Okay. It does require a lot of face time yeah. with clients. But again, that's what it's about. That's right. what differentiates us. That's what our duty to serve is all about. And it all comes down to selfless service and personal courage. Wonderful. Are you willing to step outside yourself and do what it takes? for the benefit of others, right. and ultimately everybody gets a sense of satisfaction That's at the end. That's a great thing. That's a great thing. That's a great mission for a company, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, um, just uh, we're about to wrap up. I mean, do you find, just one question, do you find some business owners have a hard time opening up? And you know, because finances is a very, very personal topic, Absolutely. do you feel like some business owners are kind of shy of opening up? And how do you encourage them to trust and uh, you know, open up to their CPAs or their financial Absolutely. It's a very scary uh, area. It's, yeah. it's a very scary event. And there are plenty of small business owners that have been had unfortunate bad experiences right. 
and such. And so where we uh, look at and we try to work with them is we say, you know what, that first year is all about relationship building. Right. It's all about getting to know each other, you understanding us, we understanding you, and really re building on that relationship. From that relationship, once we set those foundations, everything else, you know, will be set on a strong foundation and pillars and so forth. So it's all about relationship building in the beginning, mm -hmm. building that trust, mm -hmm. building that, uh, you know, just overall strategies and so forth. So. All right. And talk about building. I mean, you've uh, only been in business a couple of years. That's yes. you qualify for the uh, 2018 new small business uh, award winner. Um, so uh, congratulations once again. And Thank we you. really do appreciate all you do for your uh, for all the small businesses in our community. And uh, we hope to work together uh, together very soon. Absolutely. And I'd like to thank Ms. Uh, Kenyatta McCoy for being here today. And thank you for joining us for Adventures in Small Business. Uh, we hope to see you next week. Thank you.